Hello everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be reacting to some of your most unpopular writing and or author tube opinions. Though really what I'm reacting to is Kate Kavanaugh's video on this. I'm not going to play the actual clips, but I screenshotted some of the unpopular opinions from that video, got her permission to do this as like a reaction style video because I had so many strong reactions to some of those unpopular opinions. I didn't want to dump it all into a comment. I, the fires raged within me and burned up and Kate was like, yes, please. So really this is a commercial for Kate's video. Go watch Kate's video. And in fact, you might want to go watch it first. I'm not doing every single one she did, and mostly I am reacting to the unpopular opinions themselves. In most cases, Kate and I really agreed on a lot of these unpopular opinions. Though you know there are one or two where N I, I don't agree and I, I have my own spicy opinions about things like traditional publishing. So, some of these unpopular opinions I literally was like, we're gonna get into it. So in no particular order, starting with this unpopular, Kate labeled this a random opinion, but I, I guess this is, this is kind of a writing slash author unpopular opinion that made me go, when people say that one of their author dreams is to have their book adapted into a film or TV show, I start to suspect that they don't actually love novels as a medium and instead just want the attention slash popularity that comes with a successful franchise. Look, I get, I get where this comes from, and I won't disagree. We all know that author, or there definitely are authors, who they are more chasing that end of success. I can actually think of a few people that I know, and no, I'm not going to tell you who they are, where I indeed suspect that they only wrote a novel as a weird shortcut to try to have like a career in Hollywood, which is a little strange. Sometimes, yes, but I really hate this unpopular opinion because I think it's just it's very snobby. I, it's a very common author dream to get a film or TV adaptation of your book. And I don't think that means that you don't really love novels or you don't really love writing novels. And obviously I take this personally because one of my author dreams is to see one of my books, any of my books, as a TV show or movie. And I have no regrets about that. I adore novel writing as novel writing. If I didn't, I wouldn't invest all this time in it. Novel writing's so hard. Theoretically, writing a screenplay is easier. There is something to be said. It is very, very true that in Hollywood, it's almost impossible to get an original screenplay made. It is actually weirdly in some ways much easier to write a book and then get it optioned as IP and then made, except it's not that easy getting a book optioned or made. But meaning Hollywood is definitely interested in IP and optioning books more than they are in purchasing the average original screenplay. That is true. So I can't see some people having this shortcut, but overall, it is just so freaking hard to write a novel. It's hard enough to get a novel published and to go through all those steps. I really, th I don't think it's true that most people who say that that is a dream of theirs, it's because they don't really love novels and they just want to have like some huge successful franchise. I just mostly roll my eyes at this one because it's like, of course we dream of having our books turned into film and TV franchises because you know what happens when that happens. First of all, you get paid, which is real nice, and you're gonna get paid way more than you would writing books. Although the catch-22 there is the books most likely to be made into films and TV shows are probably already runaway bestsellers, and so the author's getting paid on either side. But like, I can tell you straight up what you get paid for first for an option, but then when something is actually made, Hollywood money is like dollar signs in the eyes. But the thing that happens when you get your book made into a film or TV show is millions and millions of people suddenly become aware of your thing because it's mainstream, it's on a network, it's on a streaming service, it's in the theaters, and the Hollywood studios are pushing it and promoting it, and then they'll do a movie tie-in edition of your book. and inevitably even books that aren't great or even adaptations that aren't great your book sales go up so getting a successful film slash tv adaptation can actually be a way of solidifying your book writing career because all of a sudden you're gonna see a massive bump in sales almost no matter what but especially if the thing that's adapted is good and if your book is good that's a paycheck for life and that's not a bad thing and yeah. Any 
Anyway, moving on to the next unpopular opinion. This one is a spicy author tube unpopular opinion. And it is doing author tube hinders rather than helps the creators writing the majority of the time. It is a totally different job that has to do with performance and entertainment. And if you are not careful, it can very easily lower the quality of your writing. Yes and no, I both agree and disagree with this. Obviously, I'm gonna disagree with it on the level of like, I don't think this personally reflects me or several of the friends that I know. But actually to that end, when you see way less on this channel or when I'm always like, I'm so bad at, bad at vlogging, cause I am, that is actually because I think ultimately when you're really in it for the writing and you're taking the writing really seriously, especially if you're doing it professionally because like deadlines don't care <laughs> why do you think there's been less content on my channel recently i am lost lost in a revision like the, the when you're really serious about it and you're doing the work i think you do see a reflection of that in the author tube channel not that it can't be a good channel and not that you can't do things but i mean i think there's so much going on behind the scenes when you are actually doing the writing that will never make it onto your author tube channel because indeed you can't really necessarily focus on the entertainment side of being good at author tube if you're doing the writing on a regular basis, or at the least, they're, they're two different modes is really what I'm trying to say. And so I'm not someone who feels that author tube hinders my creativity or the quality of my writing at all, because when I'm going all in on the writing and essentially doing what is my job, y'all actually suffer for it. I consider myself to have three jobs, and I count YouTube and the writing as separate jobs because to me they are separate. What I do in this AuthorTube channel isn't my writing, isn't the actual work that I do, and that's why I'm so bad at vlogs. So yeah, that's one that can be true, and my spicy hot take of semi-agreeing with this one is like, is that yeah, there are certainly channels where you do wonder how much writing they actually do and how good their writing actually is. But I just think it's really unfair to paint this broad brush of like, well, if you're really going hard at AuthorTube or if you're good at it or if you're successful, there's no way you're actually like doing the work and you're writing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think it unfairly creates this idea of like, you can only be a good writer if you're like, shutting yourself into a dark room and never doing any promotion or social media at all, which is essentially what YouTube is. It's like platforming. And I just don't think that's fair or accurate all the time. There are plenty of authors outside of AuthorTube who, yeah, you do wonder, they spend so much time on social media, when are they writing? But I digress. So the next one is another unpopular author tube opinion. This is also spicy. Uh, most of the writing advice givers online these days really can't walk the talk in their own prose. But we'll never know because a lot of them never actually publish. Spicy, spicy, spicy. Yes? But like the last one, yes, this can be true. But not always, but I actually quite enjoy that spicy hot take. But th this has always been true. It is far easier to give advice than to follow advice. It's also true that you can be a decent teacher and not necessarily be doing the thing. Plenty of people who aren't professional writers are really good teachers of craft. Um, and, and while of course, like I also do like subscribe to the like, I, I wanna look at someone's writing and looking at someone's writing can certainly change my thoughts on their, their advice. And I personally am more inclined to go for advice when I am seeking writing type advice. I do tend to go to writers who I personally like and admire, but I still don't think it always means that you have to be like 100% perfect to impart good information. That said, we also see a lot of uh, authors who give advice across the board. This isn't just author tube where you do look at the writing and you're like, or even you look at the advice. I've seen flat out bad advice from people who also aren't great at walking the <laughs> walk. So yeah, this, this spicy hot take is kind of true. So the only other thing I will slightly quibble with, which, cause everything's about nuance though. What's fun with nuance when you have an unpopular opinion. Um, a lot of them never actually publish. I don't like the whole rush to publish thing. Obviously, I do traditional publishing. I do understand that pressure, especially from the viewer side where you do want to see the writing of the people who you were listening to, but good 
work, good craft, and being published well can sometimes take some time. And so I think it's a matter of degrees. Is it that it's been two years, which to me is pretty reasonable if someone's trying to, you know, really work on a project and finish and publish well, or is it five years? So I think that's a matter of kind of degrees of like, is someone hiding their writing from you, so to speak? And the spiciness continues. This is definitely like flames looking on the side of my face with this unpopular writing opinion. Being incapable of outlining a novel and preferring the process of pantsing are two very different things. The former shows a lack of discipline and the latter focuses on enjoyment. Enjoying the process is the most important thing, but you should be able to outline. Yeah, you know I don't agree with this. I mean, I agree with nuggets of this, and, and because certainly I am a person who does it for the enjoyment of the process, but I really don't like the pejorative here. And th this is the constant struggle, the constant battle of pantsers versus plotters, so to speak. And let me tell you, it's rarely the pantsers throwing the shade at the outliners. We're not telling you that you're lazy or something's wrong with you because you prefer your method, but it's so easy to fling that mud at the other side saying you're lazy because you can't outline or that there is a deficit in your abilities because you can't outline. And I will tell you, the, it being incapable of outlining when I say that I am one person who does say that it obviously it doesn't mean I don't plan my stories I've gone over my process a million times I really fall in the middle but I don't think it's lazy I don't think it makes you a worse writer or represents a real deficit if you you can't do it because like for me I can't outline every single thing in my book because it's like a brain fog. I just, I can't come up with all of that minutia that outliners enjoy and that's cool. I am not gonna yuck your yum, so please don't yuck mine. That said, there is a kernel of truth here, but I just, the degree here, the kernel of truth is that it can be laziness. It can be a lack of craft it can, when someone is like oh I don't plan anything I'm a pantser I can't outline meaning there is a line where there are a lot of more amateurish writers who will who do lack some storytelling ability and they're able to say oh well I don't plan, I can't outline it outlining's bad I blah 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 and they are part they get lumped in with everyone else so my issue is calling it lazy as a matter of course because that's just not true there can be legitimate like creative blocks to outlining that doesn't indicate laziness or lack of craft or discipline but there are also people who do it who are those things but correlation is not causation Next is an unpopular writing opinion. After having been in the critique and querying game a while, you can actually 100% judge how good a book will be based on the first chapter alone. I just don't agree with this because I have had far too many experiences. I'd say ge generally you can tell if something can be good from a first chapter. It's good to showcase yourself, but I have seen far too many books fall apart after an amazing first chapter and I mean like it's always the middle guys though sometimes it's the end and I'm talking like they devolve into a garbage pile happens all the time because of how much people work over their first chapters but conversely I've had far too many experiences including with published books where the first chapter didn't really dazzle me it had what I would consider kind of a slow beginning I talk about these books a lot in my wrap-ups when I'm reviewing books but then the book hits its stride and it hits a home run and I'm like, wow. I actually read a book this year where I honestly wasn't impressed by the first chapter really at all. I can't even really remember it and I was worried that I wasn't gonna like the book. It ended up being one of my favorite reads of the year. So this just isn't always true. I th but I do think that when you're at the critique level, not so much queries, submission, published books. Yeah, it can be a pretty good indicator of whether or not someone can write, but I don't think it's an indicator of whether they got their story craft actually firing on all cylinders and if they can pull off a really good book. Oh my God, this next one, why do I have to do this? This, this is, 
It says this is an unpopular opinion. It's one of the most popular opinions on Reddit. And that is that basically you don't have to read to be a writer. There's a bunch of these. I'm not going to read all of them, but some highlights. Many different forms of entertainment can inspire and motivate writers. Yeah, but that doesn't help you write a book. I'm someone who loves other mediums and certainly has gotten inspiration or learned things about certain aspects of story craft, but that doesn't actually help you write a novel. You can learn story structure, character development, and plotting from anything. Comics and movies, for example. Yeah, maybe theoretically. There are very specific storytelling techniques and things that you can do in novels that work in novels that you will never see in any other medium. And you're not actually going to know this unless you read books. Other mediums can only take you so far in terms of actually understanding how a book works. And this one, writers, read more than write? What the hell? Yeah, you should read more than you write because there are innumerable books. And especially if you're a fast reader, you can read a book in a few hours. And of course it takes sometimes months or years to write a book. So yeah, you're only writing say 100,000 words, but you could read 500,000 words over the course of a, of a few weeks or months, depending on your reading speed. Duh, yeah, you're gonna read more than you write. Like, I know you don't want to hear it, but it just remains true. If you want to write novels, books, words on the page, you have to read. You can absolutely get a lot out of other mediums. We all do. Generally, you should be a consumer of story, period. But yeah, you're just, you, you're never going to win this one. You have to read to be a writer. End of story. And if you don't, you will be a worse writer. There will be deficits in your novel writing that people will be able to pick out. And it's cool if you're fine with that. But stop trying to make you don't have to read to be a good writer happen. Writer of books happen. It's not going to happen, Gretchen. All right, back on the author tube opinions. <laughs> um, this is the author tube's dying thing, and I just found this really, really funny. I loved all these different ones. Author tube is actually thriving right now. Author tube is dying. Author tube isn't dying. Just no one feels like watching people pretend they have an authority on writing as a whole, and no set rules. All the navel gazing about whether or not author tube is dead is only interesting to the creators themselves and not their viewers. It's also kind of disrespectful. If it was dead, how come we're watching the sixth video on this topic? I love this. Agree. I love this. This is the spicy I like. Yeah. AuthorTube is not dying. AuthorTube has definitely evolved and changed. It's bigger than ever. It's definitely thus harder than ever to break out. There are saturation issues and channels that used to have a lot of engagement have may have less engagement now. But also it's a natural progression for people to grow and change in terms of kind of their passion, both for YouTube as well as for writing. And that is okay. We're seeing shifts, but author tube isn't dying and I also agree it's really really interesting to to us navel gazing author tubers I mostly find it amusing I'm eating popcorn and I will add my own spicy hot take here that I think you can get reading between the lines of these other people I think a huge thing in this whole trend of people like being like author tube is dying is yeah, if you set up your AuthorTube channel solely to sell books and to launch your career and be like a support marketing mechanism, that is going to be diminishing returns that cannot necessarily last forever. I've talked about hard sell versus soft sell, and that's not an AuthorTube problem. That's a you and your expectations problem. But also to that whole, sometimes your interests are going to change. It's okay if you no longer have the same passion for writing as you used to, but if you are still engaged as a writer, there's always something new to talk about, especially if you embrace new formats with AuthorTube. She says, still figuring out how to vlog and starting to enjoy live streams. AuthorTube is evolving, not dying. It is a good thing. We are a community. Yeah. This one was interesting, this unpopular writing opinion. Word count goals are actually detrimental to a lot of people because they don't focus at all on the craft. We reward people who can write a lot fast without looking at what that person is actually writing. For some people's writing days, they can do more work 1K words than in 10K words, and if those words are actually going to be useful in later drafts. I find people who draft slow but steady tend to have cleaner work and actually end up being more efficient. There's a lot of things rolled into this hot take. I'm going to start top line. I've actually had an IRL person throw this unpopular writing opinion at me. It was someone I was talking to. 
and they were like, I was talking about my work, daily work count goals. And they were like, you shouldn't do that. It should be about the story. It should be about the craft. It should be about enjoying what you're doing. And my response was, I'm on a deadline. I have to finish the book. I need a daily bench count goal, a word count goal. And my goal, daily goals are low, by the way. I, my, it's usually 800 words for me. Because if I don't have that to focus on, the love of craft and story isn't going to help me when I have a looming deadline and I have to hit it. Word count goals can be really helpful to people and don't yuck other people's yum. Don't shit on someone else's process and for many people focusing on word counts is very helpful to their process. But everything else in this unpopular opinion is absolutely true and I agree with it because the flip side is if that doesn't work for you, if it hinders you, if the FOMO, it's not even FOMO, it's like jealousy of seeing people who hit amazing word counts and are really fast drafters, if that brings you down, that is legit. I feel that way. I am so intimidated by people who can do a 10K word a day. That said, I do think there's some tr potential false equivalencies here as well. It can be true that slow and steady drafting can lead to better, cleaner drafts, theoretically, or more solid story, but the opposite can be true on both sides. Some people fast draft, and they fast draft really pretty good books, and I've also seen slow drafters who it just takes them a really long time to write something that still doesn't work. So I do think it's a little bit dangerous to talk in absolutes like that, but I also agree with this that I do think AuthorTube specifically has gotten really, really focused on word count goals and high word count goals and drafting fast because it's splashy and fun and people like to click on it. And I, I agree with that, that it can be troubling. But also then my tip to everyone is just like, just turn it off. Like don't watch it if it's gonna upset you. I don't really watch things where people are talking about a 10K word day or even a 10K weekend because I know that it's gonna make me feel so self-conscious that it's just not healthy. And so it's kind of how I feel there. Okay, this one, I'm, fr I'm throwing hands. First person narrative is lazy writing. I hate this because it tends to come from people who are basically literary snobs. Even if they don't think of themselves as literary snobs, they might be seasoned genre readers, but they're used to reading books that are mostly in third person. Third person was, for a very, very long time, the standard norm in narrative writing. But we've seen a rise of first person, and thus with that, we've seen some really bad examples because Lazy isn't necessarily the word I would use, and I've, I've cautioned this when I've talked about tense and POV. First person can be a cheat POV, I think is a better way to put it. It can be incredibly poorly done um, because it can be difficult to have a strong voice, vivid detail, to simply have something that isn't a little bit boring and limited because it's like I, 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 but there is an art to writing first person. I don't think it's lazy at all. In fact, because to actually do it well, it almost is more work because there's, it is in some ways easier to be descriptive in third person. There are all sorts of hangups with first person and those who write in it, whether they choose to because they genuinely like it or it suits their story better or it is part of a genre convention or category convention, a lot of YA, a lot of thrillers are written in first person, romance too. It can actually take a lot of work to write first person that is actually good. So no, I don't think first person writing is lazy writing. The next unpopular publishing opinion is not everyone can indie publish well. True, anyone can upload something, but the point of indie publishing is to have your work found and read. So truly to indie publish well, have good cover art, have it well edited, ads, etc., takes a level of financial privilege that many don't have. Saying anyone can do it while ignoring this fact is often unintentionally ignorant to the lack of privileges people have. Yes, 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 I, is this, I guess this is an unpopular opinion in certain circles, but in my circles, this is not an unpopular opinion at all. 
I agree completely with this. I have discussed this here and there. And while it is not the reason I have not self-published, it is a reason that self-publishing has not been attractive to me. Especially when I was starting out writing, I want traditional publishing for a variety of reasons that I have covered, but also I did not have money. I am also a huge proponent that you shouldn't be spending money to traditionally publish either, which is why I'm so against people hiring freelance editors or feeling that they have to. You can if you choose to, if you have money to burn, but I don't think publishing, certainly not traditional publishing, should be pay to play. There is a lot of financial privilege inherent in indie publishing well. While of course there are outliers who can do it all themselves if they have a multitude of skill sets, by and large, yeah, there's tons of privilege that comes in self-publishing well, especially when it comes to having marketing dollars. Marketing is expensive, period. And generally, I think we should talk more about privilege in publishing period. There's tons of privilege that comes into TradPub, do not get me wrong. Uh, it comes in at kind of other levels, less with like the upfront cost stuff, but yes, we love this spicy hot take. I do wish more people would talk about it uh, because I, I think that everyone who goes into their publishing choices should go in really aware. And that's why I love the trend on AuthorTube. Not everyone does it, but when we see Author tubers who have self-published do videos on how much they spent, and sometimes they tell you how much they made, and I love those videos. They're educational for me. I find it really, really interesting. But I think that really helps people who are planning on self-publishing going in with more information than less, also seeing what they paid, and then they can evaluate the product themselves. It can also help them get tips on like what cover designers and what not to go with. I think that's the beauty of author tubes. So generally, yeah, it'd be great if there was a lot more transparency about the privilege that comes with that. Next with another unpopular author tube opinion, so many spicy author tube takes. AuthorTube is one of the only YouTube communities where it's more about the aesthetic of doing the activity than the actual activity itself, and that can be a problem. It promotes this weird focus on getting words and socializing, which is fine if it's balanced with actual skill building and doesn't devolve into a positivity echo chamber. I think it's especially useful for learning about the industry if you want to go trad pub, but it's not going to help you learn to write. I think that's fine, but it could be misleading to new viewers. There are a lot of good author tubers, but there are more that have no idea what they're doing and not all of them are honest about it. I'm another yes and no here. There are nuggets in here that I certainly agree with, but I do think some of the overall takeaway here is a little bit not dangerous is the wrong word, but maybe reductive. Um, at the end of the day, you can't really show writing. It, yeah, there are other niches on YouTube where you can actually show the thing, show the skill, because they are arts that and crafts that enable that. And writing doesn't really. Writing is, by and large, a super time consuming, super solitary activity. And no one wants to, like, what, what are you gonna do? Like, show all the writing on the screen and people pause and read it? Like, that makes no sense. So, to a certain you have to sidestep what we're doing. Yeah, maybe with aesthetic, and I will, like, like I, I get a little bit of the spicy they're going for that I slightly agree with. We've all seen channels that go hard on aesthetic, and you're kind of like, you're like 70% aesthetic and 30% everything else, and some, sometimes that's what you want. There are certain things I watch on YouTube where I'm like, aesthetic, yes. And then the, the other part here is the, that it doesn't show or lead to actual skill building and that new viewers could come in with false expectations. And I think it's, I mean, what are you gonna do? I do, I wonder how many new viewers of AuthorTube really think they're gonna learn how to write from AuthorTube. But at the same time, like, yeah, depending on where you are and what you are seeking, you can learn things from AuthorTube, but it is true it's mostly not that, but, Especially, honestly, if you're at a certain level, watching a video or reading a craft book isn't gonna teach you how to write. The only thing that really is ever gonna teach you how to write is writing. Well, <laughs> is reading, writing, workshopping. You have to do the thing to learn more about the thing and one-on-one -on -one, uh, critique and feedback is, is generally speaking always going to be more useful than a general talking head video talking about something. But that doesn't mean there isn't value in what AuthorTube can and does 
offer and the socialization and the community stuff is great and of course the comment does acknowledge that you can learn a lot about the industry from AuthorTube which is valuable. I, I don't know like yes technically parts of this are true but it, well, what do you expect AuthorTube to do? Uh, <laughs> And I'd say most channels aren't trying to teach people how to write. And I'd say most people who seek out channels aren't trying to learn how to write. I mean, some of them are, and that content exists, but I don't know. Next is an unpopular opinion about the beloved AuthorTube favorite, Save the Cat. I was not a fan of Save the Cat. Most writers who use plot structures to plan their stories write poorly. This is, the, this is where it gets really spicy. The structures are a method of analyzing stories to show patterns repeated over time. They are not templates. If you use a plot structure as a template, oftentimes you don't understand the reason for each beat so they don't work effectively and everything in between the beats is basically filler. Study the plot structures to understand the story, but please stop using them as templates for your story and more on here than I won't read out loud. Yes and no? I mean, obviously I'm over here in the camp of, I don't outline, I don't like following rigid structure, certainly in terms of planning ahead of time, but I still enjoy the idea of plot beats. I enjoy, I mean, I, I, I like overall structure and stories I do feel should have overall structure. But at the same time, for me, it's a don't yuck the yum thing again. For some people, following a template basically in structure and beats does help them. And if it works for them, it works for them. I don't really agree that anyone who follows, rigidly follows structure and beats and uses that as a template to develop their stories automatically is going to have a deficit in their writing and their execution and writing poorly. I just don't think that's true as a matter of course. Can it be true? Yes, but not always. And that's mostly just because there is so much more magic <laughs> that goes into writing a good story than rigidly following structure. But then there's also subjectivity. It's gonna work for some people and it's not gonna work for others. Someone here says that stuff like Save the Cat is formulaic Hollywood stuff. And yeah, kind of, but formulas also exist for a reason. I think that as with all things, there's nuance. I think it's good to kind of know the structure and the basics. It's just like grammar. Know the rules to break the rules or to bend the rules. I don't like the idea of throwing up the baby with the bathwater and unilaterally declaring, if you do this, it's bad. I just don't agree with that. Next, <laughs> you might be surprised with my opinions here. Unpopular writing opinion. I don't know if this is actually unpopular, but fan fiction writers should be regarded as just as skilled as other writers. I've read fanfics which are even better quality than original published works. Yes and no. No. Leaning no. Now y'all know I used to write fan fiction. Y'all know I respect fan fiction. And I think as a generally speaking, yes. I do think fanfic writers should have more respect than they have because unilaterally people don't respect them. People shit on fanfic all the time and fanfic writers all the time and say really unilateral things about them like they don't understand world building or character and they can't, you know, it means they're, they, they have a creative deficit and all this kind of stuff. And that's just not always true and there's a ton of stuff that fanfic can teach you. I'm on record as saying this in videos and in other places. There should be more respect. But I don't think there should be as much respect. I don't think the respect is the same as all other writers, basically. Not because fan fiction doesn't count, but because in other mediums, because I, I do consider fan fiction is like its own thing, you need way more skills, additional skill sets, really polished skill sets to do most other forms of professional writing that just are not a requirement for fan fiction. I mean, I've made videos about things that I had to unlearn and fix that I still work on in my writing because the fanfic default and the things that are okay in fan fiction, you just can't get away with in professional writing or you shouldn't be able to get away with in professional writing. It is more amateurish writing and I don't think that means fanfic is bad 
that, but it does mean that if your goal is professional writing, especially in areas such as novel writing, etc., that you have to level up your skill set to be successful in those areas because there are deficits in fanfic writing. Are there fanfics that are better quality than original fiction? Yes, but where I'm actually, it's honestly fascinating to me. My thing here is, I felt this way about fan fiction too. I still feel this way about fan fiction. I remember those writers who I thought were so freaking talented, way more talented than me. By the way, the true like weirdness of, I, I, of life is somehow I've ended up the published writer and not the people I knew from fandom who frankly are more talented than I am but they didn't want to write original fiction. They never tried it, or if they tried it, they never finished something. And which actually sp <laughs> speaks to the whole, I have a lot of evolving thoughts about talent versus perseverance, it's a whole thing. But also like better quality is a very relative thing because when I think back on those stories, the, the, the skill in their prose, their skill in writing an emotional arc, their skill in really getting me to care and having me hooked, yeah, might be relatively better than many original published works. But I also remember those stories I really, really loved and those writers who I thought were insanely talented. First of all, they're, they tend to be outliers in fanfic. Beautiful, wonderful outliers, and it's why fanfic should have more respect. There's some amazing writers in fanfic, both who get their start there, but also who only ever write fanfic. You don't have to move on and write original fiction to be a great writer and have command respect as a writer. But by and large, those stories had serious issues with pacing, structure, um, they weren't edited. People post first drafts in fanfic most of the time. They would be 150k whips that if it was an original published work that would be edited and whittled down and like really focused. Full of melodrama that is emotionally satisfying when you're a fanfic reader but wouldn't necessarily work in original work. Apples and oranges. So yeah I kind of I kind of don't agree with this on some level but and we're ending with the big one and the mm, basically the reason I wanted to make this, which is an unpopular publishing opinion. If traditional publishing doesn't drastically change, it will not exist by the time the next generation of writers come of age. I won't cover the second point about Amazon because you know I, I, I zeroed in right on that first one. No, that is absolutely ridiculous. You know, literally 11 years ago, and I know this because I, I double checked this, everyone was declaring the end of print books, that ebooks would take over, that self publishing was the future. And it hasn't happened. Do you know what has happened over the last couple of years, including last year during a pandemic? Print book sales are on the rise. Physical print books are selling more than ever. Buying trends are up more or less. Also, there have been studies that specifically younger readers, we have this wonderful new generation of readers, largely in part to a number of factors, but including things like Harry Potter, hmm, Percy Jackson, and they like physical books. So no, traditional publishing isn't going anywhere, just like the record industry hasn't gone anywhere, just like Hollywood hasn't gone anywhere, the studios. Now everyone has evolved in order to integrate technology and advancement and additional formats and consumer preferences into account. Things have morphed and changed, but traditional media and specifically the large conglomerates who have the capital and experience to produce good product don't go away. Things change and they shift. So no, traditional publishing isn't going anywhere, including because they have embraced multiple formats. They also do ebooks now. They do audiobooks, graphic novels, and so on. Now, there are tons of problems with traditional publishing, but they're never going to completely go away, including because there will always be authors who will take whatever that they can give them. It doesn't make any of the bad parts of tr traditional publishing okay. But it's not going to change. Uh, traditional publishing remains the best way in a, most cases, not all, to get your work into the hands of readers. And that's the point. They're very, very good at it and that's not going to change. And in fact, 
the better self-publishing gets, and it's gotten a lot better. It's gotten better, it's become more accessible, but it has also become more saturated. Self-publishing has a ton of issues, and actually self-publishing hasn't had a breakout star in a while. A lot of the biggest names and success stories people can think of now are a little bit dated. It's actually the same problem we all have being published, period. This happens in traditional publishing too, of if your genre or your category had like really big breakouts and become saturated, it's diminishing returns for everyone. YA has that problem now too, actually. And so as there, there's more and more and fewer barriers, that's both good and bad. I think it's actually gonna push more readers long term back to traditional publishing, those who have left. It only takes so many bad experiences with something that is poorly edited or poorly executed to start paying attention to publishing sources. And honestly, ultimately, I think it's gonna be really, really interesting to see if that leads to shifts and changes in the indie space. And generally, what's been good about the rise of things like AuthorTube, not just AuthorTube, but also courses and workshops, is that there is a call in the community to publish well, to publish better if you are publishing, to really emphasizing, like, really pay for good cover art hire a good editor essential and so I th I think the two streams will continue to develop separately and improve and there's always going to be problems and so some things will become impacted and other things will improve on both sides I think the they will continue to hum alongside next to each other so no traditional publishing isn't going anywhere and i don't even as i said think it's like an indie versus traditional or an e-pub versus print but i did want to point out that print sales are up and who is in the best position to physically print and distribute books but traditional publishers i think we're going to continue to move forward in a really interesting evolution where i think both can coexist and hopefully work together better. Plus, we have to take into account that the youth with social media, there's a focus on physically having books. There's that whole huge consumerism problem in bookish social media spaces. So of course, physical books, books that look really good, are going nowhere. And again, traditional publishing continues to have a monopoly on physical printed and distributed books. So no, no, pub no. Okay, so that's it. The ones from Kate's video that like got me going. I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, go watch Kate's video if you haven't already. And man, I already asked her like, could you do a part two? She got 500 responses on her form and I'm like, do more Kate. And I'm over here half thinking, maybe in the future I will do my own solicitation for some anonymous publishing hot takes since we, we have like, our, our audiences kind of converge, but we have some things that don't overlap and it would be interesting to see what people have to say. But this was fun. Thank you for watching. Seriously, thank you to Kate. As I said, I've, not been really doing content for this channel because my revision has eaten me and so this was fun because I can always do some hot take reactions. AuthorTube is not dying. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments. Did any of these unpopular opinions set you off? Do you disagree with me? I loved the discussion in Kate's comments so maybe we can do a little bit of that here and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you're not already subscribed to the channel go ahead and do that. I post videos hopefully more once this revision is done and as always guys thank you so much for watching and happy writing